You should go watch the personality strips to learn how to like present. What? <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, 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 we're being nice. Remember? Yeah. 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 All right. So today we're just going to talk about sort of some general information. Now we'll start to get into specific um, ways that living things maintain homeostasis. So as you guys said in at the beginning of class and your question of the day, homeostasis is um, the process of keeping things in balance. Sometimes we say um, <coughs> maintaining a steady state for certain conditions within a living organism. So what conditions inside our bodies do we need to maintain at a certain level? What are some examples of how our, what our body has to maintain? Right? Your blood sugar level. Okay, your blood sugar level needs to be within a certain range to supply your cells with the energy that they need. Too high is dangerous, too low is dangerous. So we have mechanisms within our body to keep it at the proper level. What else, Your oxygen. The amount of oxygen in your blood. We need enough oxygen to supply our cells with um, oxygen for respiration. So our body has uh, mechanisms for keeping our oxygen levels at the right level. What else? You? Did you say heart rate? Um, well, your heart rate sort of helps with the other things, helps regulate blood sugar and oxygen levels and carbon dioxide <coughs> level. So that's not what's being regulated. Body temperature. This is a graph of body temperature of an average person throughout the day. Because it's important to know that maintaining homeostasis doesn't mean that the conditions stay exactly constant. For example, your blood sugar will fluctuate quite a bit throughout the day. It will rise after you've eaten something and are digesting it. It will fall as you use up that glucose. It stays, however, generally within a range that's healthy. Same thing, this is body temperature. Your body temperature isn't just 98.6 all day long. It goes up and down. When you're sleeping, it drops. When you're active, it increases. But it stays within, generally, unless you have some sort of disease or sickness, um, within a normal range. So that's sometimes called dynamic equilibrium. It's not a constant level, but it stays sort of within the normal range. <coughs> and it stays within that normal range because the organism has mechanisms organelles, tissues, organs, organ systems that keep it in a healthy rate. And a breakdown of this is what disease is. A breakdown in the systems that maintain homeostasis causes disease. So all organisms have structures that help them to maintain homeostasis. We're going to talk a lot about humans, but we'll also talk about other types of organisms in this unit. So in humans, we generally think about organs and organ systems as helping us to maintain homeostasis. But even unicellular organisms have to maintain homeostasis. They don't have organs. They don't have body systems because they're just a single cell. But they do have specialized structures that we learned about in our last unit called organelles. Those organelles help to fulfill some of those tasks. For example, in this paramecium, the contractile vacuole helps maintain water balance. The gullet, the food vacuole, helps to take in food particles for energy. The anal pore excretes waste. So there are structures within even single cell organisms which can help to maintain homeostasis. So basically, all organisms need to obtain nutrients and then circulate those important compounds around the organs. So in animals, a digestive system takes in these molecules that we need, these nutrients. In a single celled organism, it would be a lysosome that digests and breaks down large molecules. respiratory system takes in oxygen that's 
important for the organism. In a single cell organism, the cell membrane allows oxygen to diffuse it. In multicellular animals, a circulatory system distributes all of these materials around the organism. In a single cell organism, that stuff moves through the cytoplasm or the ER. So these systems and these organelles are um, analogous to each other, I guess you would say. That they fulfill the same function even though they're quite different. Living things need to remove waste, which could build up and become toxic and dangerous. Multicellular animals do this using an excretory system. Single-celled organisms do it by pumping out or allowing these toxins to diffuse through the cell membrane. Respiratory system removes carbon dioxide. Single-celled organisms removed through the cell membrane. Organisms have to respond to information, stimuli from the outside and also from the inside. In multicellular animals, it happens through the nervous and endocrine systems. In single cell organisms, it happens through um, the regulation of gene activity, through proteins. Movement happens using the cytoskeleton and other membrane proteins. And finally, foreign, invading, dangerous organisms must be sort of defended against. In multicellular animals, that's the immune system. In single-celled organisms, it's the lysosomes that break down and destroy pathogens that might get into the cell. So there are um, equivalents in multicellular and single-celled organisms that are uh, important to understand as well. So we're not going to go on to digestion today. We're going to talk about in this unit various needs of living things and the systems that various organisms have to sort of um, handle those uh, requirements.